Good evening and welcome to North Andover CAM's annual meeting for the year 2022. I'm going to start off by asking our board president, Michael Hale, to call the meeting to order. A motion to call the 2023 annual meeting of CAM to order. Any motion? I'll second it. All in favor say. Aye. There you go. Aye. We're off. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, welcome. Thank you to, for coming this evening. Um, uh, my, my crew is going to uh, be frustrated because I keep looking to my audience instead of the camera, but you're the important people. The audience is the important people, and they're all our, our fans too, but um, you are our members. You're here at our annual meeting, so um, welcome. Thank you for coming. This is, as a nonprofit organization, we have our uh, obligation to do our annual report to the members, and um, which also means we host elections for our board. And what's fun about this night is we get to reflect on the, on the past year. Um, so at the end of tonight's episode, uh, a, a meeting, we'll actually be running a, a kind of a retrospective look into what, what was produced here at CAM by you. Um, so I, I you know, encourage you to stay and watch, and, uh, or at least watch the repeats at home. Um, Quick introduction, I'm Brian Frazier, the executive director. I've been here since 2008, um, and it's been a, a great ride, and we're, it's just exciting to see this business as it grows, and the community as it grows and changes, and I, li I like to see the new faces that come in and out of North Andover Cam with their, their interests. Um, to my left is the board of directors, so North Andover Cam is a 501c3, and um, I can let you guys introduce yourselves. How's that? <laughs> uh, Michael Hale, I'm the president, the current president. I'm Linda Burns. I believe I'm the marketing chair. <laughs> I'm Peter Bayless, the board member. I'm Steve Ventry, treasurer. And um, I'm going to move. Look at that. I even have a slide for this. Um, so staff on board for 2022. Uh, Myself, Bill Roberts, who is operations and programming. Gabrielle Griffiths, access coordinator. She does a lot of our marketing and outreach on social media. Jonah Perlo joined us this year as our youth outreach coordinator, which is, we're so excited for that, to, to get back into a, a full-time person with youth. Um, people you don't see uh, very often, but are working uh, all the time. We have uh, meeting contractors, we call them contractors, but, but they're part-time employees um, that cover all the meetings, uh, the board meetings that you see, school committee meetings, um, board of select board meetings and such. William Hope, um, he's, we actually have meetings running tonight, um, so if you haven't seen Jonah, it's because he's covering one of the meetings. Bill Holtz at another meeting. George Richardson, Richardson was here uh, during 2022, um, but um, he's, no, he's not doing contractor work for us. For the year of 2022, our interns were um, high school aged interns. So Liam Ryan is here somewhere in, in the control room, um, and Seon Min from the Pingri School. And those were our, uh, the kind of the staff on board and, and the support system for you guys. Um, do I have, I just want to check my writing here. I'm going to move on to business item business items. So I'm going to keep that there. So each year at our annual meeting, um, we have um, prior to annual meeting, we have a youth annual meeting, and now we're excited for this year uh, going forward because we do have one person, uh, one full timer here that's dedicated toward the youth that we'll have a lot more than just one meeting a year with the youth and we'll have um, quarterly meetings and whatnot where we can have pizza and, and kind of have a little bit more fun. But I don't want to take any thunder from that. So at, at their annual meeting, they, they make sure that there's a representative of the youth that can come here and address you as the body. So I'm going to invite up Nick Kissel. Please join us. You can have Hi, well, I'm Nick Kissel, the youth representative. Been it for a few years, and I'd like to say that I've seen CAM growing throughout these years, just more youth involved, and I, th from personal experience with what I've seen, I've seen a lot of new faces around working, helping and volunteer at sports events and other events that we help film, and 
uh, Brian touched on it with Jonah, who is the new staff here, has proved very helpful for us, I think. And just he um, helped organize the Discord, which has streamlined a lot of our volunteer opportunities. We've been able to organize and know who each other are working on events. So I've been able to talk to people and see if they're filming this and I can help film this and our schedules can work out together better. I we've seen the club has been made at high school, the high school film club, which I've seen members, many members come to now. And we've started without just talking about film, but now that we've progressed further into a year, we've been able to help on new projects throughout the school, such as we're helping the mental health club work on a video, a PSA, just to involve, help teach children and high schoolers about just mental health and the resources they have available at our school. And I think this has been a great step forward in just getting North and Cam involved in the high school now that we have a successful club. And I think as we go on throughout this year and next year even more so, I think we'll see a lot more involvement with the school as CAM and different clubs. And I think it will help spread just knowledge to the students that CAM is here to help them. And whether it be projects or anything like that, they can help, CAM can help make new things, new videos and such. And yeah, that's, that's our main focus this year's youth is new club. Thank you. Anytime we can get the youth in front of a large audience to speak is like the best thing ever. <laughs> he did a great job. Thanks, Nick. <clears throat> um, operations update. Um, I, I, I have a board member that has, a, has to go to the airport, so I'm going to try and get through this pretty quick. So um, slow me down, ask questions. Um, but um, hopefully we'll get we'll get we'll get done you know by eight o'clock. Um, some of the highlights of 2022. Um, a lot of the stuff that's taken our time this year um, are, are some of the new ventures that we talked about last year. I have to silence my phone. Um, the um, we talked about alternate funding. We'll talk about it at the end of the meeting too. So as funding changes. Um, we get most of our funding through cable subscribers. And as people uh, cut the cord and go to streaming services, that eventually affects our funding. So cable companies do find ways to make money. And in, in, in North Andover, we've been you know, fortunate to, to have a slower decline than some of our peer stations in closer to the Boston. Um, so in preparing for that, we've you know, started to look at other ventures. And one of those things is taking taking a, a active step in the performance spaces in town. So the auditorium at the high school, the auditorium at the middle school, um, we don't want to staff those. We don't have the manpower to staff all the events that are there. But the, the management, the the entry taking of the orders in the, in the customers, asking the right questions, um, getting the right information to the facilities, to the custodians, uh, to the youth. Basically, the, the theaters are run by the youth. And we want to continue that because there's a natural um, progression from kids that are interested in IT and then they get into the, to the, um, the performing arts and the tech and, and the lighting and the sound. We want to. We want that to stay in place um, because it is such a, a a great resource for the kids, and it springs them into a lot of careers. Um, so, but performance space management is a big thing that takes a lot of our time. Um, as we learn, I'll go. I'll go through it a little bit uh, more. Um, we got to learn how they do it so that we can kind of perfect it and, and go forward. Uh, the senior center is the new senior center. I'm sure a lot of you are aware of that. This construction project up near the airport. Uh, we have a we have a, a, a remote broadcast uh, production facility that's going in there so that when meetings can't happen at the town hall or there's double booked meetings, we don't have to run gear down, set it up and put it in place while the walls were open. We, got, we were able to string wires, get everything ready, and that took a, a lot of our attention, both re-quoting re things um, and, and trying to vet the proper vendors to get in there and coordinate the efforts with uh, the construction workers there. Uh, the Warden Theater, 
uh, at the Historical Society is, is we talked about that last year and uh, we, we hinted about it because it all happened mostly in 2022, I think. Um, so we'll talk a lot more about that this year, um, but it's a great partnership. There's a lot of excitement there. I'll, I'll touch more on that later. Um, high school sports coverage, we've continued that. COVID was a big um, catalyst for that. A lot of the parents love the coverage and we've gotten, we've received a lot of uh, volunteers because of that. So parent volunteers come out. Uh, interested parties come out, commentators, um, it, they love hearing their their kids' names, you know, screams like they were, you know, Cam Neely or Bobby Orr or whatnot, so it's it's great. Um, uh, one of the biggest things this year, we just, we touched upon, we restarted the, the high school, after school clubs. Um, we've been strong with the elementary and the middle school, but um, the high school, uh, especially having moved out of the high school, um, it takes a little effort getting over there. So having having Jonah here, I'm going to keep singing his praises uh, to uh, interact with the youth and, and make that the priority. That's been great. The North End, North End of a Journal um, ongoing news show. We've been able to um, Gabby has put that show on her back and, 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 and is the sole heartbeat of the journal at the moment. And she's doing a great job. We've uh, continued. Uh, with with the journal and um, and covered a lot more stuff. I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, podcasting. We introduced it, introduced podcasting last year. Uh, we created a podcast room, and and on the far end, if you haven't seen it yet, go take a peek. Um, it has definitely become uh, easy for for members to lock onto. Um, it's it's definitely easy to to start you know, with voice only and not worried about a set and all that kind of stuff. People bring on many guests and um, we've had constant shows, uh, podcasts being produced throughout the year. Uh, we were able to offer a scholarship yeah, last year. We do have a, a, a scholarship uh, that we will award this year uh, for $1,000. And that is all gener the revenue that, just a reminder, the re revenue that's generated by your membership fees all goes toward North Andover High School scholarships. So we thank you for your membership and we encourage everybody to, to renew whenever they can. And the other thing that's kind of taken our attention over the years is, is post COVID, since COVID, during COVID it was all remote meetings. Post COVID there's legislation in place that they can still kind of hang on to that remote capability of, me, of, of interacting with the meetings, the, the um, municipal meetings. And um, it's just an added, uh, an added uh, complication during some of these meetings. So contractors that we use have to be a little bit more advanced. And question? I was told that as of, I believe it was March, we could no longer have remote meetings. Uh, so they, sustainability and they said they, they um, the, the town, the town definitely can have its own um, uh, ordinances and whatnot. But um, I think the state did extends yeah yep right well i think the state extended it extended the the, the um the remote yep and that just happened within the last month um so it is nice for everybody to get back together so i encourage getting back together um but i know there is remote partic participation i'm not sure i haven't read the legislation but i don't know if the quorum still has to be made up in the room that was how it was prior to covid um that might that might be part of the language now um, so that is broad strokes of what we've done. Any questions? Uh, well, I got more details, so let me, let me keep going. Um, again, NHS cam club. So there's our, our cam club guys. Um, you saw one of them up here earlier today, but they've been, um, one of the neat things is they've been doing a, a, a mental health awareness video in conjunction with a mental health awareness club at the high school. So they reached out to us, they connected each other, and they've been working as two groups uh, on this project, and they have to submit it Wednesday, I believe. Um, so it's, the good things are happening just because we have got we have that presence there. Uh, the Warden Theater, um, big partner, a lot of, lot of time and fun and attention going over there. Uh, Gabby and I were able to run um, film festivals this summer, and again, Gabby runs with these things, and she she was able to find this film freeway uh, website. So finding films is not the issue. Um, so if we have a genre that we want to uh, do, 
we can um, we can pick that genre and run a, a, a film festival almost weekly at this point. Um, the uh, we started just kind of dabbling with it, so we we put out an invitational. Just if you want to see your movie on the big screen, send us your film and we'll do it. You know, we didn't know what we were getting into, and and so it, you know we had youth submissions, um, you know, PG thirteen submissions, and all you know all that kind of stuff. So we had to learn. Okay, how do we how do how do we orchestrate this so we know you know because now we're asking the audiences, can we bleep out stuff, and you know the uh, the uh, producers, can we bleep out stuff? So. We learned and we said, okay, let's do something for the, the holiday, for, for Halloween. Let's do ho ho uh, horror and sci-fi. So we really specifically called out for that. They're scary movies. Now we know our audience. Now we're not going to stress about some of that stuff. And I'm telling you, the content we got through all the independent you know, filmmakers in the area, we started with local from North Andover, branched out to Massachusetts, then branched out to New England. We had somebody drive up from Pennsylvania to watch his submission. I mean, it, and everybody, and this, uh, we have some historical side of people here, but everybody that is in that theater says, wow, this is an amazing resource in the community because it's not a, you know, a, a strip mall movie theater. It's not, you know, a 200 seat theater, you know, or 100 seat theater you see up at Lake Winnipesaukee. Like, it's this cozy, well, you know, just comfortable the the omni theater seats um that they brought down 20 foot 20 what do we say 25 foot screen yeah. um so so our our involvement was we do, donated the projector and the sound system so, uh 5.1 7.2 7.1 surround sound system in there and because of that we're updating our edit bay so that we can edit in 7.1 surround sound uh, so that you can create content to go directly over there so those were exciting things. Um, it, it definitely was successful. We, we you know, filled the place halfway up. Um, easily 50 people showed up uh, throughout, the, um, throughout the events and just blown away by the content. So we're, we're researching it more, how to do it. We already have an independent film producer came back to us, says he wants to have screenings there. So we have a great partnership with the Historical Society and we're gonna uh, continue that uh, maybe even as soon as June. So keep your eyes out for that. Um, the, having the resource of the theater, we actually were able to invite our industry in and they always have awards for community television. And so it, that's usually a large venue. Uh, they have food, they have dining, all that kind of stuff. And they show snippets of all the award, top three award winners. We live stream the event uh, on the channels, uh, in, uh, on the web, and we had not only, you know, North Andover residents that could go, but we brought in communities from all around Massachusetts, and they got to see the historical society and what, what that uh, space offers. Um, and so now we're a resource for our industry with this partnership. So we have, we have some exciting things on, on the, um, on the docket for the the theater and i think it's been a worthwhile investment to to partner with these guys and um the black i mean it happened this year but black history month was fantastic and we we filmed just about everything that was going on there for black history month to the point where it makes sense for us to install robotic cameras in that location so that we don't again we don't have to haul gear over there every time we want to film something the content is so well done. Uh, the Black History uh, Month events were just riveting, and um, co with the, co the choral group was there, and the speakers, and reenacting some of the speeches. It was great content for the channels, and so I think the more the merrier. I say we, we make it easier to, to televise things uh, at that location. Very excited about the Warden Theater and the Historical Society as they grow. All right, membership this year. Just, I'm going to do what you're not supposed to do, read off the PowerPoint, but adult members, 85 um, members in 2022, youth members, 63, uh, senior citizens, five, out-of-town members are growing. Last year we showed one, and this year we have nine. Um, and then total organizations, uh, whether they're business, for-profit or non-profit, we had 13 uh, active last year. Uh, neat. Uh, graph we kind of track throughout the years and um, it's you know we we went through um, some some downturn a little bit um, 
coming in and out of COVID, but now you can see the last, you know, two to three years we've been growing. So at this point last year, we had 162 members with active membership accounts last year. And 66 of those 60, uh, 162 were actually active, either working on their shows or using the facilities or any of our resources. So we like to see those charts grow. So we're, we're excited. We're excited. Um, equipment usage, this is great information to track. Um, again, we're a resource for the town. So um, behind the scenes, we monetize this and how much it would be to rent this equipment if you were to rent it outside at a professional uh, facility. Um, but this, these are the number of hours that we used our studio, live remote units, uh, our field cameras our editing bays, our town site, which is like the municipal meeting, um, municipal meeting spaces. That's a neat um, metric to keep an eye on because that's 257 hours of municipal meetings. And we get to see how efficient those meetings are over the years because the, the, the less coverage we have means they were shorter meetings or, or you know, they, they're getting business done in, in less hours. So that's just kind of a neat way to look at that. Our podcast, uh, just there's a new, you know, a, a new uh, tab on this is, you know, is we're going to watch that grow, I'm assuming. And then our kitchen, we had six and six different um, shows use our kitchen this year. That's always a question we get with the new space. Do you have anybody using that kitchen? Um, so this year we did see a lot of activity in there. I'll go a little bit more in here. Um, all right, I'm going to go. These are organizations that jo that joined uh, body in 2022, Body and Brain Yoga North Andover Athletic Association, which is one of our podcasters. They do pre-sports outlooks with the coaches and, and and you know outlooks for the season. Merrimack Valley Black and Brown Voices did, did a lot of um, uh, segments that they produced and put out onto the channels and social media, and then the Friends of 1836 House, I think it's called. Yes, thank you. Meeting house. I, I think I got distracted running around today. Um, and those are the those are the ones that joined last year, not the total number of who was active. Uh, programming this is just a neat pie chart. You still see our pie chart, the imported shows, which imported means it's not produced in town. Um, yeah, it's not produced in town. It's coming from out of town. So a resident has submitted as a sponsor to show this show on our channel, on our town channels. Um, member produced obviously is the blue pie chart at the bottom and then municipals meeting coverage mostly. And then specifically North End over cam generated stuff, the journal, um, Santa show, stuff like that, you know, the, the Santa parade stuff that we are producing on our own. And then the school system, whether it's school projects, uh, maybe concerts, that type of th stuff is, um, is, in the yellow and we see that number going down a little or pie sli slice is a little bit short but um they don't they don't have a uh, full-time teacher there um, the program is changing um, there are plans for updating the studio uh, space at that location i'm not sure how much i can tell i mean i don't know what's that's official yet but um we will definitely have a lot more activity with a full-time teacher doing graphic design uh, graphic motion graphics and graphic design in that space so we'll have a teacher uh, that we're connected with uh, for, for most of that time uh, throughout the week and I think um, we have a slide you can look at this on your own uh, Google Analytics we try and keep track of uh, all the hits and, and whatnot um, we're seeing growth uh, Gabby's been doing a great job with social media um, trying to up posts. We've been paying for posts uh, through Facebook and whatnot, and that seemed to have uh, driven a lot more traffic and views. So we're trying to spend some more marketing money in that direction. Um, we're on Google. Uh, Google's tracking our website, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Um, I see Twitter and I see YouTube. I don't see the rest of it too much, but uh, Gabby's doing a great job. Um, all right, so funding, I'm gonna stop before we go to funding. Let me just go through, I just don't wanna miss anything. I'll try and go through this a little bit more detail on, on our operations. Um, performance-based management, um, spent a lot, of, a lot of the year learning. 
learning what they're doing, how to do things, uh, how they're doing it, and, and seeing kind of the stop gaps on, on where things can be improved. So even though we said these are the questions to ask, I ran into one of the productions where they didn't ask for certain things, so they didn't provide them, which is fine. But when they got there, there was, you know, the, the sound clam, you know, the back, background for the sound was on stage, and they just couldn't do what they wanted to do with that there. So, like, actually knowing what they don't want is actually just as important, too, because these are the things that happen. The custodians on a Saturday, were, they were tasked to move bleachers. And all of a sudden, we hit them with, oh, this can't be on stage. Like, so they had to stop what they were doing and really kind of move everything around. With us being involved, hopefully, we're going to make sure that that stuff doesn't happen. So as we learn this year, all these little bumps, we're going to generate a new intake form with yes or no questions so that every answer is answered so that the custodians can manage their days better. Um, so we're identifying the, the problem areas and then start, and, and we spent a lot of time specifying, specifying upgrades. So lighting, sound for future, you know, um, town purchases, capital plans and stuff like that. So we're helping with the vendors there. Uh, again, our expertise is the industry and we can help them by, by asking the right questions. Senior center construction project. We talked about ensuring remote uh, installation, remote facilities installation for our broadcasts. Um, and then we did have to just requote uh, labor costs have gone through the, the roof. So we're talking 10, 11 grand in, in, in installation costs. So we had, we tried to, you know, look at that and, and requote as many times as we could before we committed to something. Uh, the warm warden theater, we talked about film festivals, uh, nor'easter awards and, um, yep. That, that's all the, the warden theater, the journal. Um, we've in this in 2022 we've started to morph it a little bit where we, typically we would do three minute news segments up to three minutes we're trying to take half of the show and do more magazine style and do maybe an eight to ten minute segment with a little bit more in depth kind of like Chronicle or something like that so that's that's been a new term for that and we looked it up quickly today and we are on I believe this last one was our 128th episode of the journal so that's been going um, and, and as a nugget, um, January will be 10 years with the journal. So that's been, been a pretty mainstay with uh, the CAM staff and, and volunteers. Uh, sports co coverage, we introduced instant replay for football and basketball, uh, we, for all the sports, but football and basketball uh, inst you know, used it. And when you watch the, the uh, recap of the year, you can see a lot of the replays on the on the hoops and in and, and some of the catches in football and it's and it's exciting so it kind of raises the bar on on some of the production and people are you know the families are blown away by it too um you talked about restarting the after school club uh yctv uh the youth center so cam white is now working at the youth center who is in a member back in probably 2008. Karen's shaking her head. Yeah, so he was one of, our, one of the first kids that I saw coming through here, 2008 through 2010, something like that. So he went off, lived his life, came back, got a job at the youth center, and he immediately came to us and said, how can the youth center be involved? I said, well, youth center used to have YCTV. We used to do all these things, and he's been over here every every session you know like a spring winter uh, fall session i think they skipped one um, but even in the summer they'll, they'll be here so they've had some exciting exciting times with uh, uh, the connection which is which is great it's a it's an easy connection to make we talked about po podcasts we talked about the cam kitchen um, library cookbook club even though it wasn't a tv show they can correct me in the control room if i'm wrong but the the library was over here doing their cookbook club whether it was filmed or not you know it's not a requirement but we try and partner with the, the communities uh kitchen kindness was the kindness collaborative they were in here and they did a, a show um and hopefully we'll see more of those uh healthy coaches kitchen is a ongoing one they're doing multiple episodes and community programs cook community programs cooking class um, so when they do an adult or youth classes, they actually host it here at the kitchen. So we're, we're glad to provide, provide that service for people. Um, we provided the scholarship, hybrid meeting coverage we talked. And a neat highlight from last year was that 
the Patriotic Observance Committee recognized North Andover Cam during one of their ceremonies. Thank you. And, uh, and they awarded us a, a nice wood frame plaque um, that we've, we've hung in our, our conference room. So go check it out. It was a gorgeous gift, but it was uh, just a, a, you know, a, a commemorative thing to, to you know, honor the partnership that we've, we've done with them. And it's such, such an important service. And you know, we thank you for it. It's gorgeous, gorgeous. Please check it out in the, um, in the other room. And those are my detailed notes on the updates. All right, let me check where we are on our agenda. Okay, treasurer's report. I will start. You want me to read? You want me to read from the slide, sir? Um, so funding again. Just to recap, we get our revenue from the cable bills. Uh, over ninety percent of our funding comes from the the, the cable bills. So f through Comcast, we receive three hundred twenty. Thousand nine hundred ninety-seven. Uh, Verizon, you see, uh, one hundred sixty-six thousand and nine hundred seventy-eight dollars. Um, those two numbers are so different because of market share. So there's more Comcast sub subscribers in town than than Verizon, and those do you know shift around over the year. Um, capital, we get capital grants also, and as you can see here, twenty-five thousand from Comcast. Uh, almost 23,000 for Verizon. And then other is any private donations, membership fees, stuff like that, whether or if we do uh, workshop fees, uh, contribute a lot to that. And then our total expenses on the year were 408,000, 408, close to $409,000 on, on the year. Um, the, um, and this is all still being, uh, uh, our, our annual audits finishing up with Anstis and Company, which is our uh, CPA. And that's the, the funding and support. Any questions? That's always, that always brings some questions sometimes. Uh, all right, I have that. I have, we're not going to go here yet because I got to put a, a waiting slide there. Um, so as far as our agenda is concerned, we are, we've done our treasurer's report. And then uh, the, biz, the one business item of the night is for our board of directors elections. And um, at the beginning of the month, we sent out an email uh, seeing if anybody wanted to be interested in uh, partaking in the board or any of that, any engagement, whether it's a committee or whatnot. And then after, that I think it's a two week period. The board then initiates a slate of candidates. And as we notified in the email stream, our slate of candidates was Peter Bailey's that was rerunning for his seat. And if we want to start this pro process, I'll have our president, Mike Hale, read uh, the information that we sent out to you guys. Um, so uh, Peter's uh, uh, on the board now. And um, just to give you a little background on him, uh, he has. Um, Supported the uh, musical arts and uh, um, and has uh, w through video and photography um, has a video and photography background as well. Um, he has devoted many years to video ta videotaping um, uh, North the North Andover High School marching band um, activities with his children when they were in that. Uh, he's done band competitions, football games, um, uh, uh, a variety of parades uh, throughout the town. Um, uh, and when and, and he served on the. NAMA Board of Directors, if you don't know, NAMA is the North Andover Music Association, yeah. right? Um, uh, as the webmaster, um, and he also served as a staff photographer and the staff videographer. Um, and he used to bring all of the, uh, those assets <laughs> um, uh, to the website uh, and to YouTube. Uh, he also developed a Facebook page for the um, uh, band while he was there. Uh, and he currently serves as a member of the board um, since 2012. That's about right. That's, that's, a, that's a lifetime. And then, so if there's, I guess the process would be to, to move to. Move to vote on his membership in the board? Yes. Well, to elect will, Peter, to reelect. Uh, to reelect Peter. Yep. So um, if there's, you want to call for a motion. I will call for a motion to um, uh, hold the election of Peter to be on the board. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I think uh, we should call that an, uh, unanimous for unanimous. the official. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Um, 
So that's our business part, which is great. Um, any, thank you very much. Thank you. So I just want to make a, a, just a brief statement too. I mean, we, I talk about the staff. I mean, Gabby has, I couldn't do, we couldn't do any of this without the staff. I mean, Gabby does social media. She does the journal, um, a lot behind the scenes. Um, Jonah is working with the kids and in and, and productions and working with the members. He's a bundle of energy. It's, it's great. And Gabby's a bundle of energy too. So um, Bill Roberts been here for a number of years and he's uh, very technical and, and is able to fix gear. Train, train the members, be out on, on shoots, and you know, again, with the staff, we, we couldn't do anything without them. They, they do most of the work. The, um, the more we grow the business, the more we you know, figure out new ways to get involved in the community, that takes a lot of my time to focus on the growth and the reaching and the connecting and, and, and they're really back here doing everything. So um, I do get my hands dirty in, in production and, 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 and get stuff done um, and have some of the fun. But I, I say I, I have to do the adult work a lot. So it's, it's boring and paperwork and, and that type of stuff. But um, they are. Thank you very much to the staff. Um, they, they really deserve most of the credit for all this stuff. Uh, the board of directors, um, again, they're, they're here to support us, and I couldn't do half the stuff I want to do without the, the support of the board, and um, it's, it's been a great, you know, number of years here, you know, four or five years now, it's, we've been growing the business, and I, again, can't do it with, with, without, we're all, we're all a, a family, a community, and all ships rise together with the tide, I guess. Um, so thank you, thank you very much for your support. Um, any questions? Any engagement on any of the stuff that we've seen here? Um, I might have talked a little fast, but I, I feel like I'm doing. <laughs> I might have got talked too, too fast. Um, the other thing, I, the thing that I forgot to mention was uh, ability assistance um, reached what 25 plus shows this year. This past June. June was 25, and then you've had two or three shows since then. Fantastic, and, and, and not only the numbers, but it's consistent, almost one, almost once a month, right? I mean, mostly once a month. Every October through June, because that's when the kids are in school at GLTS. Yep, and she has volunteers from GLTS that uh, work on the show, and it's... And we don't do December, because it typically brushes up against Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, and we're both hosts in Jewish, it just doesn't work out. Yep, so, and, and on the show, and we're talking, yes, it's, it's, it's politicians, it's... Um, figureheads of different organizations, and it's. The fact that the picture you had up there was earlier with my crew. Ah, yeah. Working. I think that was Bruce Tarr who was in that picture. Okay. Okay. Yep. So I mean, ongoing. Uh, so I again, if I don't write it down in my notes, I, I forget. So I apologize. But uh, a, a great, great uh, group of people that come in, uh, very engaging. So thank you for being being there. Any other questions? Any? Nothing. Awesome. Um, so. Yeah. You're in the back on trying to build in something for um, the, um, the words are escaping me now. Yep. So as subtitles for closed um, captioning. Close, close, captioning. close captioning. Um, there has been some development in our production gear where technology cost is coming down. So um, we do have our hooks in our actual playback server, Tightrope and whatnot, has a new device subscription that may be able to handle it, and we might be testing it here at town meeting this year for the broadcasts by themselves. Not, you know, anything we broadcast would would so go. An app for that? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's call it an app. It's it's software at this point. Um, the hardware end of it is still a hundred thousand dollars. So th if this app thing works much cheaper <laughs> we're on board with that um and then um also so yes yeah, so yes there's some development and uh and it may actually be tested uh in a couple weeks here at town at town meeting we're trying to test it ahead of time um but um we'll try and get it done for town meeting too so we're excited about that because that's the one thing that hasn't hit community television yet i mean some some stations are doing it, but it's it's 
we're not in breach of anything because it's still if you are able to you know financially take on that burden so we're not in some kind of breach of anything um, but technology is coming down in cost in this area so hopefully we'll, we'll see a little bit more of that um, cam funding funding in the future we are in the middle of the license renewal for Verizon that expires in June uh, and Comcast is right behind it in February of 24 uh, the town is the one who negotiates those contracts it's about providing cable services to the town we are a side beneficiary to that because of the cable act of 1984 allows the town to uh, receive up to 5% of their gross annual revenue to support uh, ventures like this. Um, so we are hopefully, we had a great showing at the cable advisory um, ascertainment hearing, um, great words of support. Uh, I saw everybody in the audience and knew kind of how we affected each of you. I had no idea what you were gonna say, but it was humbling to hear the words come out and really, you know, know that we've done those things, but like to, to just see how it's affected and, and how important it was to all of you. It was, it was the first time I've felt that, you know, and it was neat. It was definitely neat and humbling. So thank you for being there. So thank you for supporting us. Uh, we try and reach out and do whatever we can for the, for the groups around us. So thank you for, for coming and supporting us. Uh, cord cutting we talked about is, is, is the source of the funding decline. The diversity that we're trying to look forward to, we talked about the management of performance spaces. Uh, the funding, we don't want to take away from drama clubs from selling their ads and making money. And they're like, we, have, we don't want to take away from any of that. But where I can see, once we figure it out, I don't think the management of it is going to be more than an hour or two a week, you know, from the order taking and double checking and all that stuff, you know, let's say five hours a week. Uh, but we should be able to make some revenue on like a marquee advertising, like what's shown on the screen while everybody's getting, you know, taking their seats. Let the, let the drama clubs fill their playbills with their ads and stuff like that, and they still have their fundraiser. But we, you know, that's a potential for our, our, um, our income there. Uh, there is legislation for a, a mass streaming tax. I think we talked about this briefly. It keeps going to, you know, going through the cycle, it's getting closer and closer. So hopefully this year we'll see it. But basically for streaming services, Netflix, uh, can I say all these please? For streaming, <laughs> for streaming services uh, that you can get uh, to watch movies and stuff like that. Um, other states have adopted taxes on those, those revenue streams. And basically there's a pie chart in, in it's, it's 40% to us, 40% to municipality and only 20% to, is that right? Did I just do the math? 44, yeah, 20% uh, to the state. So other, others, other states have had the metrics differently, um, but we're getting a bigger piece of this pie if, if Massachusetts wants to do that. We receive no revenue from cable. Why so you yeah. Streaming services seems to me Cable comes in, internet comes right. in, they're kind of the same. That's a <laughs> higher level debate at the at the federal level of what is what constitutes a channel. What cons, what's a, what constitutes yeah. So it's it's one of those yeah, they're battling that up 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 top. So we're part of the Alliance for Community Media and they have lobbyists that are, are trying to stay on that. Yep. But thank you. Yep. Absolutely. Um I hear no? Good? Okay. <laughs> Um, all right, so um, so this was a busy year. We had big, giant ships to move, the performance spaces, the senior centers, taking a lot longer than everybody <laughs> thought it was going to. Um, and some of the, those things, that, the big items that said took our attention um, is still kind of our focus for this upcoming year. Um, the performance space thing is, is a big ship to kind of turn and we're, we're learning and we're working really well with the school administration and the, in the high schools and the middle schools. And um, it takes time and I think we're gonna keep, that's our major uh, mo you know, motives for the, for the year. The, the quicker payback is the warden theater. Everything we do over there seems to bring a lot of attention. So that'll be a, a, a little quicker impact on, on the stuff we do uh, with them. So that gets us, while we're working on everything else, it keeps us in the limelight, which is great. And of course, all our membership and in, 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 uh, activity with the 
the workshops and, and productions that you guys are, are doing uh, is, is our bread and butter, and we, we love it. That's our profit. Your time here is our profit, so spend more time here. So we love it. Uh, and I think that's going to bring us to awards. See, I don't, I don't have that side presentation on my computer, so I'm going to guess that our awards um, are coming up, and I'm going to reveal the first one. How's that? You guys ready in there? You see that? Look at that. And our first award goes to our podcast volunteer of the year, Expansive Minds. Where's mom? <laughs> and they said they, nobody knew if they put it in in the right order. So I'm gonna. So I'm gonna present you with a quick plaque uh, on our, our Expansive Minds. And do you want to mm -hmm. tell everybody about oh, your show a little uh, bit? Sure. So well. First, I'm going to reveal that Gabby is my daughter. Full disclosure. <laughs> yeah. Full disclosure. She's awesome. Um, and yeah, so a girlfriend of mine. Um, we like to talk about out of the box topics, um, metaphysics and quantum physics. And she said, you know, people might enjoy hearing us talk about this stuff. I said, oh, OK. So I went along for the ride. And we were in the podcast room, which was great. And then she said, you know, People might want to see us. I'm like, oh, OK. I was less enthused about that one, because I was kind of like, like being <laughs> just the voice over the mic. Um, but uh, so yeah, we basically just get together once a week and talk about some unique, out-of-the-box concepts. So yeah. that's it. Absolutely. Yeah. And you've done more podcasts than everybody, so it's, it's oh. a well-deserved award. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> um, this is always an exciting time of year, because it's all it, it is all about our membership and, and what they get out of it so we're we're, we're excited in this again the staff puts this together uh, they see you guys a lot more than I do I miss you guys I'm not saying that I our next one is business volunteer year of the award uh, body and brain Tai Chi and yoga Riverwalk is Barbara where is she, is she right? excellent Thank you very Thank much. You so much. You're, you're more than welcome to say hi if you'd like. <laughs> I could say hi. I don't even know what you mean by being the volunteer of the year award. So uh, just the amount of time that you spend working on your your content. Oh yeah, it's yeah. been great. We have four YouTube channels, so it's been really beneficial to the Boston area. That um, one of the women that actually leads one of the YouTube channels uh, critiques the YouTube piece and then sends it to Gabby and they're able to put it up on the TV station. So it's really, uh, they're all excited. Actually, one of the stations that runs from Arizona, I think will certainly soon join in and do that also. So yeah, it's been really fun. We just filmed here two weeks ago, and my member came, and we did a voiceover in Spanish. So now we'll be able to uh, share that with the Lawrence TV station. So, yeah. Fantastic. It's really great. Thank you so Fantastic. much. Fantastic. I'll see you later. All right. And next, North. Uh, so the middle school volunteer award goes to Evan Zimmer, and I think he's in the control room. Or no, he's he's, he's behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just shake your hand. You don't have to talk if you don't want to. <laughs> Fantastic. There you go, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to cheat and look. OK, I'm excited about the next two. All right, so our next award goes to Amberly Cefalo, Cefalo, uh North Andover High School Volunteer of the Year. Thank you very much. Uh, again, uh, most, most volunteer hours so far. And you're in here uh, working on your show. You're welcome to talk, or you can you can go take your seat. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I feel good that we have an extra 10, 15 minutes here because I'm going to invite up our last award member, and it is Kevin Mange, our adult volunteer of the year. 
And I know Kevin can talk. Watch your step. Congratulations. Come on up. You don't have to talk, but if you want to talk about what you do here, or so Kevin, he he produces a show every year, uh, every day, almost every week about his interests, and he's he's a delight to have here, and he has his own way of entering the building every day, and he keeps us guessing. So, <laughs> congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> do you want to tell us a little bit about your show, or do you want to take your seat? Um. Maybe a, a little bit. Well, basically on my TV show, like what Brian just said, is just based on my interests and what I'd like to talk about on my interests. If some of you want to head over to the North End of Her Cam YouTube channel, you can do that, and you can find me in the Kevin Mange um, I kind of forgot the last part, but yeah, <laughs> definitely there. Yeah. Find your find your 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 playlist, right? Yeah, yeah, my playlist. And you can see how much I put a whole lot of effort, the whole lot of commitment I decided to put into North End of Her Cam the best I could. And I wouldn't have earned this award without North End of Her Cam's help. So thank you so much, North End of Her Cam, for helping me earn this award. I can't wait to come back and continue what you like basically through me. <laughs> Enjoy it. That's just that's just that. <laughs> Fantastic. We always fight about who his favorite employee is behind the scenes. But we all know who it is. <laughs> um, fantastic. Thank you all uh, for coming this evening. That's the end of our um, regular programming schedule. and. Um, there's still food, so, oh, I did not talk about our food at all tonight. It's part of my job. So we got our, uh, so before, prior to our annual meeting, we have uh, dinner for our, me our members, and we always try and reach out to a local restaurant that um, has uh, started up within the year. So uh, this year it was Londi's uh, roast beef, and, um, and they, they have more than roast beef, so we had chicken and broccoli and meatballs and all kinds of stuff. But they are located down at the Market, Bas Market Basket Plaza in the, I believe that's the North Andover Mall. And um, they were fantastic. Did we, did we like tonight? Was tonight good? Um, so um, you'll, you'll see, the, um, you'll see the, the advertisements on the bulletin board thanking them for their service for the next uh, quarter here on the, on the television. Um, so we're excited about it. Thank you very much to Londi's for providing food for our members. And um, we thank you, and we look forward to a, an exciting rest of um, 2023. And we'll go forward from there. Right. Are we good to uh, do we, call? Do we need a motion to close the meeting? Motion to adjourn our meeting. I uh, make a motion to adjourn the 2023 annual meeting. Second. Second. <laughs> do you actually have to? All in favor say aye. We are adjourned, yeah. and if, uh, we'll roll our, um, our, our retrospective for the year. Uh, for 2022. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Awesome. How it comes to be that uh, we know one another and some of the work that we've been able to do together. When I started at Essex Art Center last year, you were one of many people in the community who really welcomed me so warmly. The North Andover Senior Center provides local curb to curb transportation. Breath, my very breath, be saved, for a new day is dawning. Sitting at the table now, we have the two men who are running for the school committee in North Andover. These are Joe Hicks and Kevin Duby. To be a woman of color entrepreneur to me is liberating. Mike, thank you so much for taking the time to come today. 
Thanks, Amy. Glad to be here and uh, excited to share the Soccer Shot story. I would love to be more confident in my intuition mm-hmm. and know that when I feel an inclination to something, it is intuition. So uh, we've had our most successful youth meeting in a while, actually, with more members in the previous years of coming this year. Greetings, North Andover. I'm your host, Gabrielle Griffiths, and it's time for the latest edition of your North Andover Journal. I started off in 2015 doing makeup, and I did a lot of bridal and prom, and then that got me introduced to um, aesthetics. We were missing some guys, uh, you know, guys still recovering from illness. There was a flu going around a couple weeks ago. And- My name's Lan, and I'm the owner of Lan's Lap House, as well as a franchisee of Lap House Dry Cleaning. So that came to us in the beginning of December and it spiked our numbers right through the holiday season. I had actually started the North Andover um, Artisan Market at the Mills back about four years ago when um, we partnered with the Farmer's Market. We are uh, located locally in 50 states and across 70 countries. I go into coffee shops or any place that really um, has the space and it's really kind of a way that we like to come out into the community. How is the season going so far? So, uh, you know, it's going pretty well. I think uh, right now we're probably exceeding expectations. I think we've been exactly that. We, we take care of the stray animals for the North Andover Police Department. The town also um, put together a, a whole website. So Sarah Brush, who is the town webmaster, put together a, um, a website that tied in with the banners. Describe senior night. Uh, it was awesome. From the very beginning, our, all of our underclassmen and juniors got together. Our first market this month is going to be our Celebrate Diversity Market in honor of April being Celebrate Diversity Month. We originally started our markets back in 2020. The weather's been cooperating to a degree and we actually got out. We're commemorating that event with a presentation here of a bunch of different uh, uh, Warden family members. All of our vendors here have a variety of different backgrounds and and we want to support all of their businesses. We have some kids who started with us as little junior ninjas and have even gone so far as to go to the world competition in Vegas. A story behind the the farm goes way beyond me and much earlier. We're eight and six which five out of those six games we could have won which is a positive and a negative. But also buying ammunition for the funeral details uh, for the local fallen uh, veterans we have in the community. Our friends at the DPW come by and pick up the bag. So really all you got to do is stuff a bunch of trash in a bag. We are here today at the 50th anniversary of the sheep shearing in North Andover. It looks like it may be a passing shower. What about the warrant itself tonight? Yeah. Do you feel it's heavy, light? you think it's going to go quick? You never know what other one pops up. Gathered here this morning to kick off North Andover's annual Memorial Day Parade. Our mission is to empower women through wardrobe styling. This is our fourth year in uh, displaying the uh, Field of Honor. It was a big decision for the club to do it the first time. Rather than doing an in-person thing where, you know, you're lucky if one person shows up, why don't we do a television series? We're super excited. Um, the, the potential of getting filmmakers into the area. Um, we're, we're excited to have all the local filmmakers. They get to know me and what I do. Um, it's really opened up the avenue for a repeat business. We have members that do all sorts of different activities. Uh, a lot of our members just like to hike. Today we've invited the Lawrence General Para- Paramedics. We've got AAA here. We've got the Merrimack Valley Substance Abuse Program. Tonight I'm giving a talk to the North Andover Historical Society on the subject of the history of ghost hunting. We're in, right in the middle of our Winter Lights event, which is our annual event we do every December, every year, and it's about 200,000 lights that we put up across the property. We're doing a little soft opening here in November, and then in February we're gonna be doing comedy every Saturday night. We're here to benefit the Historical Society And really our goal is to uh, support artisans. What is the North Andover Athletic Association? So we fundraise strictly for North Andover High School Athletics. In memory of Daniel Joseph Donovan, for my daddy, miss you so much, Carrie. Land where my mothers died, 
land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside. How have you guys imported significant changes to really show the importance of community bonds? So the, the biggest change is the population. Yeah. Uh, and 22 years ago, our population was 12,000 less than it is now. And this year, Joe uh, Bella, my friend here, Mr. Bella, who's uh, <laughs> the head of the um, raffle tickets, um, and hold up the raffle tickets, Joe. And handballed out. Looks like McCarthy's going to get it. McCarthy's going to take a shot. That looks pretty good. That's a goal. That's a straight through. Natalie and Sasha, you guys kept on interrupting me when I was trying to tell you a library is supposed to be quiet. And you guys were so disrespectful. And you guys decided to do a TikTok in my library. And yes, the peach one does. Next, we have the peach one, which I think there's only one of these. This is only with the Monkey King one. You take out minifigures and steal their peaches. Very simple. And we're going to do other things with this game during the week. Okay, I just got a whiff. Mm. <laughs> All right, so this here. smells. Delicious. Since I'm only allowed one word, I'm going plural on you. Opportunities. Communication. Professional. Dependable. Empowering. Everywhere. Inclusive. Cool. You can do all that because it's fun, right? But mm -hmm. let's not get attached to it because we have full control of doing it ourselves. But if you want to catch up to where Pokemon is really at, then how about Definitely watch the Japanese episodes to catch up with me. We're going to send it back to our correspondent on the streets, Gabby Griffiths. Tell me a little bit about yourself. So how old are you guys? I'm 12. Here he comes. It's Santa Claus. Come on, North Andover, put your hands together. The Let's jolly, for Saint Nick. jolly old elf himself is here. It's Santa Claus. Let me turn to my co-host, Ethan. Thank you, Caden. Jake was only here at the youth center for a few short weeks. No children are here yet, but the staff are getting ready for a busy week. The youth center has been open for one week already and has ran some YC staple games like Newcomb Knockout, Volleyball, and Football. During April vacation, the youth center, North Andover Public Library, and the YMCA partnered up. I spoke to the staff and they have informed me to be ready for a packed week full of awesomeness. That's awesome! Everything you see or think or say is awesome! Got you stuck up in my head, yeah. Memories follow me. Concentrating on trucking right. That's a huge fish! Pancakes for breakfast. A great excuse I can do that to with have root beer at breakfast. Cherry juice. If you could eat it, if you would eat at the same restaurant for a week, where would it be? Ninety nine, probably. Have to create a pyramid of twenty one large cups. Hi, I'm Asher. I'm Sky. And this is Really Fake News Network. We're here to tell you about all the juicy celebrity gossip happening in Hollywood. So, last night, there was a charity event. We're back in Idaho, live with one of the victims of the potato pandemonium. Wednesday looks like we'll be expecting hail the size of Idaho. Good evening, parents, guardians, family, friends, and most importantly, our Class of 2022 National Honor of Society inductees. So I'm going to call to order a meeting of the North Andover School Committee. Today is Monday, May 9th, 2022. <laughs> 
This year's award goes to Araldo Peguero. And today's uh, Certificate of Excellence Award presented by the superintendent goes to valedictorian Daniel Middleman and salutatorian Anusari Chittinetti. Isabella Ayan. Victor Baez. Shot, no good, good, strong defense, and here's an outlet play. This is exactly what the Knights need. Here we go. Tewksbury, 82-55, and then they, their last game, they beat Chelmsford, 57-56, in a nail biter. Sam Melville on course, and Lydia Schwartz from Manchester Essex in the start. Gavin wrestles it right over. He's got it on back. Two point takedown. This one could be quick. Five seconds to shoot. There's Hannah Martin for three. Will Arms is on course, and Evan Kelly from St. George is in the side. And going into the boards heavily is Stolen, uh, Tegan Dolan. Shot goes in, and they try to pass it over. A go! That's Walensky off tackle. Plenty of room. He's and on. he's gone. He, he just he needed that one block, and he he helped the blocker set it up. He just hung back there, letting the blocker get the angle. As soon as he applied the block, he was cutting and gone. Let's watch this again. O'Neill had no one to block. 25-yard touchdown run. Oh, yeah. So it's going to get cool. Oh, that misplayed by Andover. Charlie Martel, the goalie's not coming out. Oh, the goalie is coming out. Okay, goalie came out kind of late. Two spray in the paint. And they're gonna go down the carriage trail. That's a nice hit. Off the block and out. Grigway looking for another bucket. He's got a few already. Big time from three. Wow, Zach Grigway, big three-pointer there. Amy Brown. No flag is pulled. Good evening and welcome to the January 10th select board meeting. This meeting will be conducted via remote means in accordance with applicable law. This month we are pleased to welcome Joe Walsh, president of Adaptive Sports New England. Set up with a mission to increase the participation in sports. I started the week of the gas explosions. So oh, that's timely, yeah. <laughs> to say the least. Tell me a little more about the primary and secondary caregiver. Yeah, so when we're looking at the family dynamics, and there is somebody in the family who needs some level of care. The classrooms aren't overcrowded, right? And where the teachers are not in closets. You have subdivided due to needs from the pandemic that we needed to bring in additional staff, and we were so fortunate that we were able to do that. I was deployed to Iraq in 2006 with the Corps of Engineers. I uh, went with the unit out of Fort Benning, Georgia. Um, served in Ramadi, Fallujah, uh, Baghdad. What is NILP? We are uh, basically an independent living center and we're, we are run for and by people who have uh, disabilities. People from different backgrounds and it's really um, you know, eye-opening to have different perspectives come to the table and ask questions that 
also, you know, that we hadn't thought of pre previously. So where is Royal Crest located? It is 1 in 28 Royal Crest Drive. Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion as presented, please raise your red card. Thank you very much. It can help keep you in the moment. It can um, help you build confidence in your communication skills. It's important for a couple of reasons. One in that zoning helps codify what a community wants to see in terms of physical development, in terms of uses. I personally want to thank you, and I would ask that Brian please come forward and join me up at the podium. Is a small but extremely deserving thank you for all you and your team have done and continue to do for the committee, our veterans, and the town. Thank you so much. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation. In 2016, town meeting voted to adopt an electric aggregation program for the town of North Andover. In July 2019, the town adopted the program through the Department of Public Utilities. Some of them are runners, and so what that means is they do a fight or flight response, mm -hmm. and the dog is trained to do search and rescue. On Sunday, September 11, 2022, I want to acknowledge the residents of North Andover, town workers, members of the select board. The reason that I'm so excited to be here representing Ironstone Farm is because I believe that the intervention and the service that's being provided there is truly making a difference. Getting the world working jobs after college and deciding this isn't for me, I need something more. I want to be a part of something bigger. My youngest daughter, I have four children, uh, she was born with Noonan syndrome and a tub 2B gene defect. Um, and she was very medically fragile from the beginning. It certainly does not insulate us from potential surprises or emergencies, but it does allow us to consider and try to account for them. We were kind of the first to kind of get back into things. How can we make That's this safe? How can we go forward? How can we get people back out into the communities. This space will be used for movies, documentaries. We'll have a large, very large screen uh, that will be in here for projection. I would like to personally invite you to use this website to learn about why North Andover is a wonderful place to establish and grow your business.